going to show you a few different parts to our formwork here. Let's start with the ties. So these are snap ties here. Uh, two different types of, of snap tie, a similar idea. This just has a little button on it. And there's what we call the, the brake back right in there. And this has a cone on it. And the brake back is here inside the wall. And each one of these is, is crimped slightly. And that's to prevent it from twisting inside the wall when we break it off. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, they will be in between the wall and these set the thickness of the wall. These are both eight inch ties, whether it's a cone or the little buttons on there. Now the formwork goes on the outside of it, like that. And outside of our formwork, or our, our form fly, I should say, we're gonna have a stud, a whaler, and then our wedges go on the outside of that to hold it in. Uh, outside of that, we could have a strong back if that's something that we needed at that time. On the outside of our snap ties, we have a little hex nut on the end here, and that's made to take our wedges. So our wedge is going to slip over it like that, and we pound it down to about halfway. We don't want to overdrive that thing. This one won't even go through there. This is an old uh, wedge. But we don't want to drive it all the way to the end, like on this one, because chances are what we're going to do then is take this little wee button here and just push it over that little stop. And now our wall, instead of being eight inches apart, would come in to maybe be seven inches apart, or well, it's probably not going to go that far, but you get the idea. So these are three different, slightly different wedges, and they all serve the same function we want we've got nail holes in these here for holding them in place so that when we run the vibrator down it doesn't vibrate off come loose turn upside down and drop off and then it's not doing what it needs to do now back here we have coil tie so this coil tie would be a 10 inch coil tie you can see it does the same function as a snap tie it's just a heavier duty sort of outfit. Uh, here's a coil tie we have set up that would be a 54 inch coil tie. On the same concept, uh, the coil tie sits in the, in the middle here. Uh, there's our plywood would be out here. Uh, this is like a big washer and this is just a wing nut that we would use for tightening it on. Uh, this is adjustable out here. We can put as big a size of a threaded rod as we need for whatever we've got between the form ply and the outside here. So we can just put, you know, it could be studs, whalers, could be, uh, we could even put I-beams, we could put whatever we have out there through that. Uh, so this thread's very adjustable. We could cut this to whatever length we've got with, that we need. And on the other end here, we have another coil tie and another cone and the same concept on this side. All right, this doesn't have a big wing nut on it, so we'd have to use a wrench on that to turn that. These cones, these coil ties just look like this. Cones slip off and go back on. At this end of our coil tie here, we've got our cone and our form ply is gonna go in here. We'll have a hole where this threaded rod will go in here. And before we stick that threaded rod in here, we wanna put some petroleum jelly on there so that when we when it comes time to strip the form so it comes out of there nice. We want to slide that in here, or twist that in here. We get a hole on at the end of that for a sec. And it wants to come through about half one, uh, half a, one half a thread there. Here's a piece of four inch water bar or water stop. It's what it looks like in section view. Uh, and this is what it looks like. It's fairly flexible. Um, so that, that would be the center of it and, and the center of that should be in the center of our keyway like we have here. This is a, a footing and there's our key right there and right in the center you can see where our, our water stop is right there. Uh, here's other types of water stop. This is a roll. It comes like this and it has a backer on it. This piece itself is pretty dried out but you get the idea and that would go in the same place right here, once we're, our footing's placed and cured, we're gonna put it right there on top so that it, it creates that nice water seal that we're looking for. 
just want to have a look at a form, just a little model form that we mocked up. Okay, and this is what we'll be doing in class. We're going to use asphenite as our sheeting. Out in the field, you're going to be one inch form ply. Okay, but a sheet of one inch form ply is probably close to $150 or $200 or $300. And one thing you learn in the field is you don't cut that form ply. So in here, because we're making mistakes all the time and asphenite's cheaper, we're going to use this. But since it's only half an inch thick, our ties, as Scott was explaining, okay, the, the outside part portion of it is too thick for a, a stud and a whaler. So we're going to use an asphenite washer on it. Okay, you probably won't run into that out in the field, but if you have to, and that's all the material you're using, it works the same. That spacing. And another thing, you can get these ties that are different lengths. They're short and long. Some of the short ones, you're only going to have studs. And there'll be a steel bar goes through. These are the long ones, they call it, the long extension, because it's catching a stud and a whaler. Okay? And as you can see, it's an 8-inch wall. Okay, we got the little buttons that are going to keep it apart at 8 inches. Okay? Uh, the, the outside of it then, okay, you've got your studs. And snap ties are generally on two-foot centers, which means you're two-foot this way and two-foot this way. Okay. Now it'll be rated on your, uh, the, the ties will be rated for the, the width of the walls. Uh, you get snap ties in a wider wall, okay, they might have to be closer together. Then you will run into using a coil tie maybe. Okay. Um, again, this is a mock-up just using some material. Any of these whalers should always land on a stud. Any joint should land on a stud. Because if we had a joint in here, that means I'm only relying on one whaler. Okay, and if it doesn't land on a stud, we put another stud in. Okay, again, as Scott mentioned, we nail the wedges. So the vibrator, when it hits that tie, it doesn't pop this and flip it off. Okay, and that's a carpenter's job is to watch a form. Okay, and that's what you're watching for. Straight, plumb, level. Um, this one here, okay, we've used a plate at the bottom. Okay, maybe it was tapcon down to the footing. Okay, and we take off from there. You're going to run into some guys that they'll put this plate behind the studs. So you chalk a line three and a half inches back, then we tapcon that. These studs will go right down to the footing. Okay, so it all depends on who you're working for and uh, what way you're going to build it. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Another thing with your, anytime you're doing form work, we talked about it in base and intermediate, you let your material run long, okay? I get, this doesn't, this isn't like building a picture frame, okay? Anytime I can run that long, if this happened, happened to stick up six feet, okay, or eight feet, I could use that as a handrail, a guardrail, okay? If I cut it off, I gotta do all that work again. Okay, so get in the habit, even your whalers, they run long as long as they're not hitting us in the head, Okay, then I've still got that piece of lumber left. Okay, I've got an eight footer left. I'm not cutting everything in half and you just, it, it all comes down to efficiency. Okay, so that's about it. The, the parts of a form, how they go together and that's what we'll be doing here in the, in the shop. Okay, like I say, out in the field, that's gonna be form ply as a rule. That's one inch thick. Okay, uh, that means I wouldn't need these washers in order for, for the extension on my tie. Okay, uh, always keep your wedges vertical, as close to vertical as you can, okay? Uh, if they end up here sideways, I've, I've lost my bearing, okay, on the two whalers, fair enough. These bird's mouths should not be in a whaler, okay? It's just uh, a mock-up. Another thing we can do is, uh, if there was a bulkhead in here to stop the fly, stop our concrete, okay? When we extend our whalers long like this, we can use that as a, as a uh, brace, okay, to stop. And the bulkhead could be back in there somewhere. We might have to have a bulkhead in there, okay. We would nail it into this plywood, and then I could brace it from the end. It also ties my wall together, okay, and allows us to put kickers up these corners. So here's a look at one of the forms we've got standing already. It, it's a, it looks really good. Um, you can see that we have our, our two-foot centers on our ties, two feet this way and two feet this way. 
uh, our whalers and our whalers are running long out here you can see them running long out here and at the other end they run uh, really long which is great because they can use that uh, as Jerry mentioned to tie back for your bulkheads uh, it's a little bit overkill here uh, if this was normal ply uh, normal form ply that we would be using here a little overkill on our studs uh, we're at uh, like 10 inch centers it looks like uh, across here uh, but that's, that would be really good if we were forming with aspenite the more studs we've got in here obviously the the stronger that's going to be uh, at the top there's no top plate on there it just runs long and we can see in our corner here we've got these kickers whalers running long this one was cut off so that we could get by and uh, these run long out here, uh, which is great. And then it gives you a space to put those kickers in there. And that's a really nice tight locking unit right there. Uh, while we're standing at this form, I wanted to mention the layout on a sheet. So we have a four by eight sheet and we lay it out with our, our holes for our ties at, at one foot, three feet, five feet, seven feet. That way, all of our ties will be two feet apart. If we had to put another tie or another panel up on the top up here, we'd bring it down and you could put it either direction. If you ran it eight feet this way, those ties are still gonna be two feet apart. If you ran it eight feet up and down, ties are still two feet apart. We're just talking about a step bulkhead here in this example. We, on the one side of your form, we'll have a step bulkhead, okay? The bottom bulkhead has a keyway in it and it'll be split for the water water bar to be in and there's what Scott was talking about the middle of the water bar is actually in the where the concrete quits on this key okay so half of it's still back in the form and the other half is out in the concrete when we form okay we've got can strips okay which is uh, just I think we've got a 1 inch can strip on this cut at a 45 degree angle on all the outside corners the same on these uh, step bulkheads above us okay the purpose of a can strip, okay, is to soften the corners so that we don't chip them off, okay? And you will see them on all, any, any columns in a building, okay? The outside corners will have a chamfer strip or a can strip on there of some sort. What it does is we don't chip them off whenever we're working around them. Also, you'll find in concrete forms, we'll have a can strip on this side, and when we put the other form on there, we'll put a can strip on the other side, and it gives you a little bit of a space that we'll fill that with cocky. Okay, because that's where we want it to crack. We want it to crack at this bulkhead, if it's going to crack at all. Okay, so this step footing, I believe, is in a foot, up three, in a foot, and up two. Okay, to the top of the form. But that's what you'll see a lot of times is you're going to have a can strip on all outside corners so they don't break. We didn't put the, a lot of times your, your water bar, there would be one in the footing, it would be, come up to here, it would come across, up this bulkhead, across and up there, and you weld that with a high, with an iron. Okay, so that key, that water bar would come right through, and then when we strip all this and pour the next one, it's going to be embedded in this, and it'll be embedded in the other one. Okay, gives you an idea of what we're going to do with the, this one here. On the other wall, okay, we don't have to show it, but it's just going to be a straight bulkhead, straight all the way up with a keyway in it. Okay, fair enough. That's it for the bulkheads. You want to talk about that? Okay, the back cut? Sure, thanks, Scott. Okay, always when we're finishing concrete, we have to get our, our trowel in there, okay? So if we brought this two by four right down, it would be right on top of the concrete, and I can't finish the top of this or get at it, so we always chamfer it, okay? This one's at a 45, it could be at 30 degrees, it doesn't have to be 45. Notice the same on this, but it's in order to get in here and get that concrete finished. So that we don't have something in front of us. You'll do it on stairs also, okay? Um, and in turn, these are all put on before we take and put the inside forms up. So you'll build your outside forms, okay? Sometimes you have to build the inside forms. It just depends on where you're working. But you'll put all these uh, um, bulkheads in first. They'll be spiked in, okay? And there might be ties be going through this. Okay, to, to, to work with them. Um, with this bulkhead outside, we'd like the whalers to go long so that we can tie them in as I spoke in that other little pattern we had. Okay? These ones here, if that goes long, we can brace back off them. Okay? 
And these ones, a lot of times, if they're big forms, we might bolt these through, which in turn, then the, the concrete won't push them. The nails, they would push. Okay, but if these were bolted right through, and a lot of times on the bigger job sites, you're using your press and wrench as much as you are your hammer. Typical door buck, okay, that we're gonna build. The whole idea on anything that's you're building inside a concrete wall is that it will, you can strip it real easy. So it'll collapse without chipping all the concrete. Okay, ideally, concrete cures at 28 days, but we like to strip our forms, and it would be nice to leave them on for 28 days, but we like to strip them as soon as possible so we can use this material and get on with more work. So that's why we would put, there should be a can strip on this outside corner and on that in, that outside corner there and here and all around. It's just not finished yet, okay? And that way I can strip a little quicker, but you want it collapsible. So notice how we've got our front, we'll call this the header at the top. We put a scarf joint in it, okay? And in turn, we would take a brace then, okay, this, board is too long but we would put a, a, a piece across there and put a post in there underneath that scarf joint right down to the floor with a wedge in it so that when we pull the wedge out that loosens this up it collapses and this comes out and in turn we'll take the sides out notice how that we've got some cuts in this that will come out okay and we'll take these braces out first and then that would collapse Okay, and then we're not disturbing the concrete. You've got to remember the concrete's our finished product. Okay, another way of putting a brace in here, this little member here is, is catching both of the uh, two by four members or whatever we're using to support that form. Okay, and you're catching them both with one. So if you made up a middle brace with a kicker on the top of it, okay, and we tacked it in this uh, at the right position, and we wedge it in place. Ideally, I put a wedge back and forth with that. One this way, and one the other. Until we're the right distance on our form. Okay? And again, nail this brace in, nail that brace in. Okay? Nail your wedges. Again, if the vibrator ha happens to hit this form, it's gonna shake everything and those wedges will pop out and my braces have no value. If we didn't put wedges in here and we cut it perfectly tight, we'd be sawzalling this whole thing out. Okay, and a lot of times, especially in high rises, you're gonna use this door buck 16 times. Okay, each floor will have the same door bucks in it, so we're reusing it. Another thing with this door buck, any kind of a buck, whether it's a door buck or a window buck, Make it one eighth narrower than the wall. This wall is eight inches wide. We'd make this buck seven and seven eighths. Okay. By the time you make it and tighten this all in, the concrete's going to push it out. And think of it, that's only a sixteenth on either side. Okay. So it, we end up at right at eight inches that way. Uh, again, these members should be the, where they're the most strength. Concrete's pushing against it. If that two by four was on its flat, it's not as strong. So use your lumber to the most strength, okay? Those of us that are strictly residential, we're putting in beams and things. You wouldn't put a header in on its flat. You'd use the strength of the lumber this way, okay? And in order to strip this, a scarf joint works good. Doesn't have to be that long, but you do need to put a member in there, okay? And I would move this front or back, put the post right in behind or on either side of it, okay? And then when you strip it, you just pop the wedges out, pull them two nails, this brace comes out, okay? These, these will slide in because of this. These will collapse in this way, okay, and come out. This one slides down from the scarf joint and come out, and I can reuse that whole unit, and it's not damaging the concrete that you're putting in.